Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.3 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. This is going to be a nice little short and sweet problem, unlike the next one, which I'm still working on, problem 3.4, uh, is quite a hard problem. But anyways, this problem should be short and sweet. So it says that we want to find a general solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates, in the case where V only depends on R, and also in cylindrical coordinates, where the potential only depends on S. So basically, it just wants us to find the general solution to Laplace's equation in one dimension uh, in the case that um, uh, where the potential is in, in spherical coordinates and in cylindrical coordinates. So first of all, Laplace's equation, of course, is that the Laplacian of the potential is equal to zero. Um, and so I've written the potential as a function of R here. And if you look in the front cover of Griffith's book, you can find that the Laplacian of some vector function in spherical coordinates, uh, or some Lapla uh, the Laplacian of a function, not the vector function, the Laplacian of a function in spherical coordinates can be written like this, where I've only included the terms where we have the V, where, where the function is um, uh, dependent on R, so we're, where we're taking like derivatives and stuff of our function uh, that makes sense, because there are some phi terms and some theta terms However, if our function doesn't depend on phi or theta, those terms are zero. So I've only left the terms in the Laplacian that apply to our case. So we have one over r squared, a derivative with respect to r of r squared times the derivative of the potential with respect to r equal to zero. So we can get rid of this one over r squared term by multiplying by r squared. Um, simple as that. And then we have that the derivative of this whole term inside here is zero. And what does that mean? If the derivatives of something is zero, the derivative of a function is zero, that means that the slope um, is zero, which means that the function must be a constant function um, if the slope is zero. So we know that then r squared times the derivative of the potential with respect to r is equal to a constant then, where I've named c the constant. So we know r squared times this is equal to c, and multiply or divide by r squared. So the derivative is equal to c over r squared. And then just multiplying by dr on both sides and integrating both sides, um, you find that the, the, the potential uh, v of r is equal to the integral of c over r squared dr, where this integral just evaluates as a very simple integral to minus c over r plus another constant k, which I've just uh, which I say here is also a constant. So C and K are both constants of integration. So this is the general solution to Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates. And then it's basically the same kind of thing for cylindrical coordinates. We have Laplace's equation as a function of S, and then using uh, in the front cover of Griffiths, I've written what the Laplacian is in cylindrical coordinates if we only have a function of S here. And doing the same sort of argument, I multiply by s, and then we have um, the derivative of this is equal to zero. So that means s times this uh, derivative is equal to a constant. And so doing the same sort of thing, uh, multiply by ds and integrate. So the integral of dv is just v. So our potential as a function of s is equal to the integral of c over s ds. And the integral, c is a constant, so that's really just the integral 1 over s, which is the natural log of s. So it's just a natural log of s times c plus another integration constant, k. All right. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Can't really get easier than that. So thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And yeah, have a good one.